Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, it's my pleasure to introduce Tanner Jenkins. Tanner got his bachelor's degree in chemistry from Northeastern University, where he studied drug distribution and worked on radiofluorination as well. He then worked at the Novartis Institutes for Biomedical Research in Massachusetts, the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology in Japan, as well as the Northeastern University Center for Renewable Energy Technologies. After earning his PhD in the Engelab at Scripps, he headed over to ETH Zurich, where he's currently working as a postdoc in the Mirandi Group. And with that, I'll let you get started, Tanner. Thanks for joining us today to share your work. Hello, and thank you, Matthew, for your kind invitation to share some of my recent work on low-valent tungsten redox catalysis. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my work on the controlled isomerization and carbonylated functionalization of alkenes. First, I'll start with a brief introduction about some of the precedent in chain walking functionalization, and then I'll move on and discuss a little bit about how this idea was conceived of and why we decided that tungsten would be particularly well apt for such a transformation. Chain walking has emerged as a powerful strategy for forging CC bonds at remote CSP3 sites by the controlled migration of a metal catalyst through a hydrocarbon chain. As these reactions are under thermodynamic control, these protocols can promote functionalization at either the terminal position of an alkyl chain, largely due to steric constraints as shown in pathway A, or alternatively, functionalization can occur alpha to a pi system, which can benefit from eta-3 stabilization or for emission of a metal enolate. Additionally, thermodynamic isomerization of the alkene to the conjugated position can then allow for classical conjugate addition reactions. While these positions outlined in pathway A and B have been well established, I was curious whether we could develop a methodology that could target the unactivated positions in the middle of the alkyl chain. Unfortunately, these metal alkyl mediates are destabilized and suffer from rapid beta hydride elimination. Consequently, it's very difficult to achieve selective functionalization at these positions, and typically a mixture of regioisomers is observed. As you can see from the bonds bolded in purple, this area of the molecule comprises a majority of the chemical space and therefore it would be a worthwhile endeavor for reaction methodology. As I knew I would need to be stabilizing these secondary metal alkyl intermediates, I took a page from the CH activation playbook and wondered whether a chelating directing group could be used to control the site selectivity in the chain walking functionalization. I envisioned that an alkene distal to the directing group could selectively be isomerized inward by sequential metallocycle ring contractions until eventually forming a stable five-membered metallocycle. At this point, the alkene would be in the beta gamma position, and this could allow for functionalization at this unactivated internal position. While this approach looks attractive on paper, previous work by our group and others have shown that common bidentate directing groups, such as adaminoquinoline shown below, are key for stabilizing these internal metal alkyl species. These metal cycles are conformationally rigid and too stable to undergo the required endocyclic beta hydride elimination. In these cases, the calculated transition state energy was astronomically high for these square planar palladium II species. Therefore, I knew I would need to use a transition metal that could more readily adopt higher coordination number geometries, as well as design a directing group that would be much more conformationally flexible. This is what turned my attention to the group 6 metals, as they exhibit coordination geometries distinct from later transition metals such as rhodium, palladium, and ruthenium. One key feature of these metals is that they are able to undergo oxidative addition from a 6-coordinate species to form 7-coordinate 18-electron species in a variety of different geometries. These geometries typically have a low energy barrier for isomerization between them. I believed access to these coordination geometries would be key for allowing the substrate to adopt the required conformation for the challenging endocyclic beta hydride elimination. As you can see, these seven coordinate species have a clearly congested coordination environment which would promote favorable insertion and reductive elimination to alleviate the steric congestion. While recent literature on chain walking functionalization has largely precluded the use of tungsten, early studies have shown that this may not be the case. Seminal work by Wrighton showed that a photogenerated 16 electron alkyl tungsten 2 species could then easily form a beta agostic interaction and undergo facile beta hydride elimination even in chirogenic temperatures. Beta hydride elimination, reinsertion, as well as isomerization of the geometry were all found to be barrierless. 
Earlier work by Wrighton and Gray also demonstrated the ability of tungsten zero to undergo allylic CH activation, followed by hydride reinsertion to afford isomerized alkenes. This was shown to happen in an iterative fashion when used with simple alkenes such as 1-hexene. With these fundamental findings in mind, and due to the industrial utility of chain walking carbonylation reactions, I began screaming common bidentate directing groups with tungsten carbonyl. While the flat SV2 directing groups 1 through 3 provided no carbonylated products, Chitani's picololamine delivered the desired product in near quantitative yield as a single regioisomer. The pyridine coordination was found to be essential as the corresponding benzylic amine provided no product and a tridentate variant was also unable to give any carbonylated product. Other group 6 metals led to a large decrease in yield, likely because tungsten is the most kinetically stable and the others will decompose more rapidly at the reaction temperature. A representative panel of other transition metals likely to catalyze this reaction, including iron, ruthenium, rhodium, iridium, and cobalt, were all examined leading to low or no yield at all. One atmosphere was found to be the optimal pressure of CO, as lower pressures of CO led to faster decomposition of the tungsten catalyst, and higher pressures completely shut down reactivity. With these simple optimized reaction conditions in hand, I then began to evaluate the substrate scope. It was found that alpha-branched substrates containing a terminal delta epsilon alkene gave the product in very high yield and moderate DR. Importantly, when starting from the enantiopure enbach alloglycine, the product for the major diastereomer had complete enantioretention. Other substrates, including a 1,1 disubstituted alkene and those possessing an alkyl chloride or even multiple alkenes, were well tolerated. Next, we wanted to extend our protocol to classes of alkenes which have been historically challenging in the chain walking literature. First, we targeted those that required thermodynamically uphill isomerization, which we believed could be compensated for by a highly exergonic carbonylation step. We were pleased to find that Michael acceptors and styrenes possessing valuable functional groups including iodides, bromides, and nitriles could undergo deconjugative isomerization to give the desired carbonylated product as a single regioisomer. Cyclic alkenes have been another challenging class of substrates in the chain walking literature, and we were pleased to find that under our reaction conditions, the alkene could be selectively migrated around the ring and give the desired product as a single regio and diastereomer. The cis ring juncture was confirmed unequivocally by single X-ray crystallography. Tri-substituted alkenes, which require thermodynamically uphill isomerization, were able to give the desired product in high yield. We next tested the distance dependence and found a gradual decrease in yield as the alkene was moved further from the directing group. Despite this, an alkene requiring a summarization over six positions was still viable, although obtained in low yield. We were then curious whether introducing a chiral center on the directing group could allow for this transformation to occur in a diastereoselective fashion. Increasing the steric bulk in the benzylic position led to a gradual decrease in yield with no improvement of DR eventually leading to complete drop-off in DR and yield when the most bulky terp-butyl group was used. Fortunately, the optimal directing group, where R is equal to methyl, is commercially available in its enantiopure form, and this allowed us to give the desired product in a 5 to 1 DR with 99% EE for both major and minor diastereomers. Due to the rare mechanistic studies on the tungsten 02 redox cycle, we were curious to investigate this both computationally and experimentally. We then teamed up with our computational collaborators in the Liu group at the University of Pittsburgh to gain insight into a potential reaction mechanism. The reaction is initiated by a loss of three CO ligands and coordination of the substrate in the facial geometry. The meridional conformation was calculated to be 3 kcal per mole higher and 13 kcal per mole higher for the oxidative addition step. Therefore, we could safely rule out these geometries for the initial steps. After coordination of the substrate, then a rate-limiting 3-centered NH oxidative addition occurs from the capping phase of the octahedral geometry. This step occurs in an endergonic fashion and is followed by a very low energy hydride insertion followed by the key endocyclic beta agostic interaction. This agostic interaction triggers the beta hydride elimination to form a coordinated isomerized alkene, which leads to an energetically favored intermediate I4. 
facile reinsertion of the hydride forms the stabilized five-membered metallocycle and allows for a coordination of an additional CO to form a seven-coordinate intermediate I6, which is then able to undergo a very low energy CO migratory insertion followed by reductive elimination to afford the desired product and turn over the catalytic cycle. As you can see from the calculated free energies, spectroscopic detection of any intermediates is likely to be very challenging as the rate determining step is the first step of this sequence. This indeed was the case when monitoring the reaction with a stoichiometric amount of trisacetonitrile tungsten tricarbonyl. Even variable temperature NMR had no effect and only starting material and product could be detected by 1H NMR. After the inability to detect any possible intermediates by NMR, I then undertook independent syntheses of various tungsten intermediates in hopes of giving experimental evidence for the formation of seven coordinate species as well as confirming their ability to undergo CO migratory insertion and reductive elimination. I conducted this synthesis using a directing group bound alkyl iodide along with the tungsten zero source and was able to affect a facile oxidative addition which goes to completion at room temperature within one hour. This intermediate is stable in solution for days. However, evaporation of the solvent leads to formation of a black oil, with the only identifiable species being the reductive elimination product. However, in a one-pot fashion, W1 can be directly treated with silver triflate and base to remove the iodine and deprotonate the amide, thus triggering CO migratory insertion and reductive elimination. As I was unable to isolate any intermediates in the solid state, I then conducted an analogous synthetic sequence on a directing group bound aryl iodide, SM2, and was able to isolate the oxidative addition complex and confirm its structure by X-ray crystallography. Using the same conditions from above, abstraction of the iodide and deprotonation of the amide occurred at room temperature. However, this species was also unstable and underwent CO migratory insertion and reductive elimination. So then, a small electron donating ligand PME3 was added to trap this intermediate. This bisphosphine complex W2 prime could then be isolated with the structure confirmed by X-ray. Close inspection of these two structures show markedly different coordination environments of the directing group. While in the case of W2, the chelate is bent significantly to 129 degrees, in the case of the deprotonated amide, it is only 166 degrees and much closer to planar. Additionally, the angle between CO and the carbon that undergo 1-1 insertion was only 68 degrees, which is much less than the 90 of a square planar complex. This is thought to promote the 1-1 insertion due to the small angle and steric congestion. With strong evidence for the proposed underlying coordination chemistry, oxidation states of tungsten, CO migratory insertion, and reductive elimination steps, I then conducted deuterium labeling experiments to gain insight into the NH oxidative addition and H insertion steps. First, it was confirmed that the reaction did not proceed through the intermediacy of a conjugated alkene. Then, a series of in situ delabeling experiments were run. If ND oxidative addition and exohydride insertion occurred as expected, this would result in deincorporation into the terminal position. Indeed, high levels of deincorporation were found in the terminal position for various substrates which suggested this mechanism is operable. We also wanted to test whether the directing group would promote chain walking in a unidirectional fashion. We were able to confirm this hypothesis using a set of delabeling experiments. First, by using the internal alkene with a termini labeled CD3, we showed that isomerization did not proceed in an outward fashion away from the directing group as no descrambling was observed. Using the non-labeled substrate with in situ ND labeling, deuterium was found in the expected position in high levels. Lastly, putting the alkene at the terminal position with ND labeling again showed high levels of deincorporation in the expected position. In these cases, we attribute the incorporation of multiple Ds per molecule due to the ability of the substrate to become partially uncoordinated and undergo a second labeling event. The extremely strong bonding of CO to tungsten causes this dissociation and in some cases was calculated to be thermodynamically favored by DFT. These sets of experiments suggest a dissociative chain walking process where the substrate and catalyst can come on and off. However, 
intermediate alkenes are able to be fed back into the catalytic cycle and eventually go on to afford the desired product. If you are interested in this work, you may also want to check out our recent publication where we use low valent tungsten to control chain walking for a remote hydroboration reaction using simple amides as directing groups. Thank you to my many amazing coworkers, and thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this research spotlight for Synthesis Workshop. Thank you for tuning in for this research spotlight episode, and thank you to Tanner for joining us today. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.